to the Lord in prayer. Father, we bless you for this day that you've made, uh, that you've allowed us to navigate through, uh, to gather corporately in this place called Salem tonight, yeah. to give glory to your name. God, we feel your presence here. And God, we're expecting to receive from you tonight. We need to hear a word from you, God, that will challenge us, that will convict us, that will mold us and make us, that will shape us more into the image of Christ. And so, God, it's our desire that you would fill us up tonight with what we need. We're individuals with individual needs and wants and desires. You know all about it. And we're trusting you to be good and to be God, to meet us exactly where we are. God, we pray now for Pastor Meeks as he prepares to bring forth the word. Give him clarity of mind and clarity of speech. Clear anything out of him that might distract him from doing the work that you called him to do tonight. God, we want to be open tonight. Erase the things from our mind that would keep us from hearing from you. We know that there's a word in the house tonight, especially for us, God. And we want to get it all from you tonight. God, bless us in this place. That's our desire. That's our prayer. Equip us to push the cross forward. That's what we seek to do as your children, to be your hands and your feet here on earth. It's our desire that you would get the glory out of all that takes place in this place tonight. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. The saint said, Amen. Turn around and hug somebody and tell them I'm praying that you would understand this word tonight. Those of you who are watching on television, we are happy that you have joined us in a live service coming from the Salem Baptist Church of Chicago. Pick up the phone right now and call us. Let us know that you are watching. Let us know that you want prayer. We'll be so glad to add you to the list of people that we pray for. We are praying for several of our members who have lost loved ones. We're praying for our members who uh, are convalescent and sick and uh, they're at home. And then we're praying for our members who are lazy and they're at home. Amen. There are several categories of people who need prayer. Turn around and tell somebody, thank God we're not on that list. Amen. This week, all right, I heard that, I heard that, I heard that. But we are honoring God tonight, our Savior, from whom all blessings flow. Those of you who faithfully watch us online and you're out of town, you're not from Chicago, and that's the only reason you're not here, we thank God for you. Those of you who watch, drop us a line and let us know what city you're watching us in, and we'll be happy to pray for your family and to pray for your city and to pray for you. Amen. Because uh, we are so glad that the Lord has allowed us together one more time, and we give God all the honor and all the praise. Anybody grateful about being alive tonight? Our Father and our God, we lift you up. Your name is supreme. Your name reigns supreme. Be our preacher and our teacher. Help us to know how to honor your name. We pray now, God, that if there's anybody uh, in our midst or under the sound of our voice that's never received you as Savior and Lord, we pray that they would receive you right now. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20 one verse Exodus chapter 20 one verse verse 7 you ready Amen. thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain amen thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain for the Lord thy God will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Will you read that verse with me, just the first part? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Turn around and tell somebody, neighbor, Amen. say his name. Amen. 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 I want to talk from the subject, say my name. Say my name. I've been telling you now for about a week that that's what I was going to talk about. I want to talk about say my name. For the young people among us, and I'm not going to go into deciding who's young. You decide yourself if you're young or not. But for the young people among us, when you hear the title, Say My Name, you will immediately think of Destiny's Child. 
Destiny's Child, they have a song entitled, Say My Name. I ain't never heard it. I don't know who they singing about, who they talking about, but I just know that there is a song out there by Destiny Child called, Say My Name. For you older uh, baby boomers, especially the men among us, you will remember a prize fight, a heavyweight bout, 1965. As a matter of fact, February 6, 1965, Muhammad Ali was fighting Ernie Terrell. Ernie Terrell was insistent upon calling Muhammad Ali Cassius Clay. And he said he was not going to call him Muhammad Ali. He was going to call him Cassius Clay. And in the midst of the fight, while Ali was beating the stew out of him, <laughs> Ali was standing there saying, what's my name? Are you with me? I'm about myself. I came by tonight, Salem, to suggest to you that a name is important. A, a name is important. Our names are important because, somebody asked me why. Because that's the way we are identified. When I'm in a crowd and somebody says, James Meeks, I immediately turn around. Are you with me here? Somebody calls the name Walter Owen, Stephen Thurston, Deborah Smith. Uh, we know that they're talking to us. Are you with me here? However, however, there are other features about us that you can use to identify a person without calling their name. All right, we're in the airport, we're in the airport, and we hear over the loudspeaker. Will a female with a beige coat, beige boots, black sunglasses, and a brown purse please return to TSA. Uh, everybody ain't going to turn around. Are you with me here? First of all, hopefully only females <laughs> would uh, even stop. But next of all, if you don't have on uh, that color coat and that color boot, you know they ain't talking to you. Are, are you with me here? Oh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah. You can describe us uh, by not calling our names. All right, I'm getting ready to describe me. I'm getting ready to describe me. All right, I'm not going to say my name, but I'm getting ready to describe me. There is a fella. He's tall. He's cream color. He's extremely handsome. Everybody know. I mean, are, are, are you automatically know? Even if I hadn't told you that I was talking about me, you would have known that I was talking about me. Are you with me here? All right, one more. Have you ever seen a person that you have not seen in a number of years? You haven't seen them in a long time. And you could not remember their name but you knew that you knew them. Huh? Anybody ever been in that situation before? You, you, you trying to recall, and uh, I don't know. Uh, let me just say this. don't have nothing to do with the sermon. God, nothing. I, I don't play the game no more. I, I don't, you know, I just say, help me remember. I know I know you, but tell me where I know you from. Amen. A lot of people stand there and just be too ashamed and embarrassed to say it, we go on to have a whole conversation with a person, and then we go away, and then somebody say, who was that? I don't know, child. I know I've seen them. I know I've seen them somewhere before. I don't, I don't remember. Are you with me here? Okay, watch this. Watch this. God's name is his only description. Ah... Uh, did you hear what I said? God's name is his only description. God has no visible or facial features by which we can describe him. We can only describe him by his name. When we hear the third thing on God's top ten list or this third 
commandment. Many people have reduced this commandment to about seven words, seven words, seven words. Many people have reduced this commandment to seven words. Don't use God's name when you cuss. Amen. You ask anybody, what does it mean uh, not to take the Lord's name in vain? And they're going to tell you, don't use God's name when you cuss. So since we already know that and we got it clear, turn to the person next to you and say, neighbor, don't use God's name when you curse. Amen, amen, amen. All right? Uh, now that we got that covered, this commandment is much bigger than not using God's name when we curse. Are you with me here? The third commandment, if we reduce it to just that, it says that we have missed the full meaning of what God wrote with his own finger. You do know that God wrote these commandments with his own finger. Amen, amen. It wasn't him telling Moses what to write. He wrote it with his own finger. And so it's got to mean something if God himself wrote it with his own finger. All right, let's get into it. Uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. What did he write? Thou shalt not take the name of uh, the Lord thy God in vain. All right, here it is. The word take. Thou shalt not take. Is that in your Bible? Thou shalt not take. The word take in the original Hebrew literally means to lift up. To lift up. To lift up. It refers to the lifting of the voice when you pronounce God's name in a religious manner. All right? Say it again. It refers to the lifting of the voice. God! I just lifted my voice because I pronounced God's name in a religious manner. It means that when you sing his name, it means when you're reading the scripture, anytime you're in public and you are pronouncing his name, it means to lift his voice, to lift the voice. Are you with me? All right. The person, Walter, who led worship in the Old Testament, they lifted up the name of the Lord. Are you with me? The worship leader. That, that was the worship leader's job was to lift up the name of the Lord. God said, don't lift up his name in vain. Oh, God, I promise I'm going somewhere. Don't, don't lift his name up in vain. All right, ask the person next to you, what is in vain? The term in vain is also a Hebrew word. It means wasted, desolate, or empty. Words that are wasted, words that are empty, are words that are not heartfelt. Uh, uh, wives, how many wives, how many wives do I have here? All right. Has your husband ever apologized to you? And he apologized. Some said yes, yeah, some said no, some said I'm still waiting on the first time. Has he, when he apologized, most of the time you all think that when we apologize, it's in a way that we really don't mean. All right, I'm sorry. All right, I'm sorry. Now, have, now, we, now let's get that over with. All right, I'm sorry. Now let's have sex. <laughs> We, now that we done got that over, now that we done got that over, let's get busy. Let's get on with what we got to do. Let's get on. It's hard for a wife to accept those words, even though they were the correct words, perhaps. I'm sorry, but they were empty words. Are you with me here? They were words, but they were words that were not heartfelt. They were words, but they were words that were not sincere. When somebody apologizes to us, and I don't know how we know it, but we just like to think that they mean it from their heart. 
and or that they are sincere. Are you with me here? All right, let's put it together. God is saying, don't lift up my name in a way that your heart doesn't feel it. Are you with me here? When you say my name, when you say the name God, the, when you say the name the Lord, say it in a way where you feel it. Now, unlike you and I who say to people, you really didn't mean that. You really didn't mean that. We, we just saying it because we think they sound, but God really knows whether or not we meant what we said or not because he's the only one who sees the inside are you with me man looks at the outside but god looks at what heart the heart so since he looks at the heart he really knows that if it came from the heart or if it came from the head holy is the lamb all right uh in order to really understand thou shalt not lift the name of the Lord thy God in vain, we got to deal with what's the meaning of God's name. What is the meaning of God's name? First of all, let me tell you this. By adopting a name, God is saying, I'm personable. You got a name. You got a name. I, 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 I got a name. He's saying that I want to be communicated with. Ask somebody, how often do you talk to God? Amen. Amen. Have you, we don't even stop to think about it. By taking a name, God is saying, I want you all to communicate with me. All right, let me put it like this. If God didn't have a name, there would be no way to approach it. Through his name, we may approach him in worship. God, I love you. God, I adore you. Are you with me here? If he ain't had no name, what are we going to say? I have to, the great being out there somewhere, I appreciate you. That's why I get so upset. That there are not too many things that upset me that people do, but I do get upset when people call God the man upstairs. Huh? God has a name. Are you with me here? His name is God. Amen. Just say God. You don't have to call him the man upstairs. His name God. Uh, through his name, we approach him. When we pray, anybody here pray? Anybody here pray? Anybody pray? All right. When we pray, we approach him. Father, uh, God, we uh, come to you today because we love you, because his name means that you and I can communicate with him. His name is the channel through which we can focus our minds and our hearts on him. You see, if he didn't have a name and we were just focusing on some being out there, you might be focusing on one being, I'm focusing on another being, but when we say God, we know what we're talking about. So it's the channel through which we can focus on him. God chose for himself a name, and the name that he chose is so full of meaning. His name that he chose is telling us what we should have in our mind and on our mind whenever we approach him. Huh? God's name that he chose for himself is telling us what we should be thinking about when we approach him. All right, Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. It should be on the board in a second. Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. We'll save a minute from turning. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Uh, let's go to verse 13 first. I said 14. It should have been 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what? What's his name? What's his name? How are we going to identify with him when we don't know a name? What's his name? Uh, what shall I say unto them? Read on. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, read, I am. 
All right. The name that God chose for himself is the Lord. Or God, either one of them, you're you in good company. If you say God, if you say the Lord, that's the name that God has chosen. Now watch this. This name, the Lord or God, it means the self-existent one. It means to be or to, ex or to exist. The self existed one. Old people just said, he's just God all by himself. Self-existent. God is self-existing. What does that mean? That means that God does not obtain life or power from anyone or anything outside himself. And he is the only self-existent one that there is. All other life, all other life form flows from him. Are you with me here? All right. God is self-existent. He doesn't get anything from anywhere. Nothing else contributes to his isness. There, there is nothing that comes from outside of him that makes him him. Are you with me here? But any other form of life, they got to get something from him. He's the only one that's independent of everything. Are you with me so far? All right, let's move on. Since he is then the single source of all things, and Romans chapter 11, verse 36 says, of him and through him and to him are all things. Since he is the single source of all things, then he is the one and the only one that you and I must turn to for every blessing that we have. Touch somebody and say, neighbor, without God, we can do nothing. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 5, that without me, you can do nothing. So God, get this name now, God, self-existent one, God, without him, uh, you and I could do nothing. He is the single source of all of our blessings. He has, let me go on to talk about God. You don't mind, do you? You don't mind if I talk about him for a minute. He has all authority. He has all authority. When Jesus was resurrected from the dead, he said, all power, all authority is given me in heaven and earth. God doesn't have to ask your boss nothing. God doesn't have to ask your husband nothing. God doesn't have to ask our kids nothing. God has all authority. Are you with me here? He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the ruler of the whole world. The 24th Psalm says it like this, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. When we lift up his name, when you and I say God, when we pray God, when we sing God, when we lift up his name, we are saying all of this. This is what we're saying. We're saying all of this. We're saying that we consciously acknowledge his supreme eternal life and power as the self-existent one. That's what you're saying when you say God. I acknowledge you as the self-existent one. We're saying that he alone is the source of all that there is and that he is the giver of everything we need. You fool around and start thinking that it, it's up to you if you want to. You fool around and start thinking that you're smart enough to get something and to figure something out if you want to. When you say the name God, you are acknowledging that he is the giver of every good. I wish I had a real church here. And every perfect gift. When we say that name, we're saying that we acknowledge him as the absolute Lord of our lives, and we owe him unreserved and unhesitating obedience and service. Huh? 
We sing that song, he's Lord over my life. What, what is that song? He's Lord over my life. He's Lord over my life. Fantastic, because he is. But then when he wants something from us, it ought not be no argument with the Lord over our lives. But we, a lot of us, we, we just kind of got it like that. We just crazy like that. A lot of people argue with their boss. I've never understood that. I've never understood arguing with your boss. I've never understood arguing with the person that could fire you. That, that doesn't make much sense to me. I mean, you could have a conversation and say, well, you know, now you know if we do it like that, uh, this is the result. But if that's what you want, that's what you want. Because you the boss here. You may, are you with me here? So you know if people argue with their, you know if people argue with God, they don't care nothing about arguing with their boss. But what we're saying is that God is the Lord over our lives, and we owe him unhesitating obedience. Holy is the Lamb. Our text, Exodus chapter 20, verse 7 God speaks in the third person, and it's him who puts emphasis on his own name. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. He act like he ain't even talking about himself. That thou shalt not take the name. Now, in the other commandments, he said, thou shalt have no other God before me. But in this one, he says, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Somebody asked me why. He spoke in the third person because he wanted to emphasize his name. This whole thing is about his name. The Lord is demanding uh, on the basis of everything that I just told you about his name. He's demanding then that we as his people that we reverence that name. Huh? He, he's demanding that we reverence his name. Okay? What does the Bible say about his name? What does the Bible say about his name? Uh, Psalms chapter 8, verse 1. You know, the, now, those of you who don't want to look, uh, that you know the scriptures are coming up on the board. Those of you who want to, for the exercise, you can. Keep your Bible's pages turned because they only get turned when they in church. And if you want to be able to turn your Bibles, you can. If you don't want to, if you want to look on the board, uh, what does God say about his name? Let's read the word. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Tell somebody his name is excellent. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. Look at verse 9 of that same passage of scripture the psalmist starts and he ends the psalm the same way this is the ninth verse of psalm 8 O lord our lord read with me how excellent is thy name in all the earth you better know it you better know it you better know it you better know it how excellent is his name now we can't say how excellent are your looks because we don't know how he looks but, but we describe him by his name. How excellent is thy name. Psalm 29, verse 2. Psalm 29, verse 2. All right? Psalm 29, verse 2. Give unto the Lord the glory that's due unto what? His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of of holiness. The psalmist said, give it to him. Give it up. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give to the Lord the glory that you do his name. You, you, I, I just told you about his name, how, how high he was, exalted he is, how lifted up he is, how he's the self-existent one. Okay, if that don't, none of that works, your life comes from him. The next breath that you breathe comes from him. The, the, the mind that you have came from him. The fact that he's keeping your soul, the fact that you're safe, all of that comes from him. Your little house, your little car, everything that you have, it comes from him. Give him the glory. That is due his name. 
You know what you know about do, you know about do, you know about do, you know about do every month. Your rent is due. You know about do, your light bill is due, your car note is due. What happens when your car note is due a couple of months and you don't pay it? You know about do, don't you? Well, since you know about do, then give to the Lord the glory that's due his name. Psalm 66, verse 1. Psalms 66, verse 1. Psalms, preach, Pastor. Psalms 66, verse 1. Sing for, make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Read on. Sing forth the honor of what? His name and make his praise glorious. That's what that song is that we sing. I am created to make your praise glorious glorious. But the psalmist says there, sing unto him and give him the honor that's due his name. One last one right there, Psalms 96 and 8. Psalms 96 and 8. I'm just trying to tell you what the Bible says about his name. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto what? His name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Just give him the glory that's due his name. Can we just stop 30 seconds? Can we just stop long enough and just try the best we can to give him the glory that's due his name? Give him the glory. Give him the praise. He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. We got a right to give him the praise. We It's due him. We owe him. Anytime we able to walk into this place, we owe him the glory. Bless your wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's joy in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name. Glory to your name. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing of sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. All right? When the Bible says, give him the glory that's due his name, our English word glory is translated in the Hebrew kabod. And it means weight. Uh, it, 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 it means weight. Tell somebody God's name is heavy. Amen. Amen. It, it, it means weight. It means weight. Uh, we have to acknowledge God's power and give him the praise that's befitting the level that his name is on. Huh? Uh, okay, okay, okay. The office of the alderman, and I'm not belittling any human, anybody tonight. The office of the alderman carries some weight. Amen. Carries some weight. There are 50 aldermen here in the city of Chicago. The, the name carries some weight, but it's 50 of them. All right. The name of a congressman or the office of a congressman carries some weight. It's 400 and 35 of them. The office of a U.S. Senator carries some big weight. It's, it's only 100 of them in the whole United States, so that office carries a lot of weight. The office of the President carries a lot of weight because it's only one of them. Are you with me here? But it's been 45 since we've had a United States, but the office carries some weight. I stopped by to tell somebody tonight, but there is no name that carries as much weight as the name of God because there is only one of him and there can only ever be one of him because he is the self-existing one. Nobody voted him in. Nobody can vote him out. And his term does not expire. His name carries more weight than any other name that you could ever name. 
Are you with me here? Uh, while, while I'm on names, I might as well jump to the New Testament real quick. While I'm on names, Acts chapter 4, verse 2, uh, verse 12. While I'm on names, Acts chapter 4, verse 2. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under the heavens among men whereby we must be saved. You see, salvation comes, well, Paul says it like this, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that's a name, and believe in thine heart that God is raising from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The act says there is no other name given among us whereby we must be saved other than the name. Somebody holler Jesus. Oh, that was wonderful. That was wonderful. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. We're almost there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him. And what did God do for him? Giving him a name. Don't forget now, we're talking about a name. Don't take the name in vain. We're talking about a name. We're talking about the weight of the name. And giving him a name which is above every name. Read on. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things on the earth and things under the earth. He got a name that's higher than any other name. That, that, that's why I'm amazed that we get up in the morning without calling on that name. We go to bed at night without calling that name. We sit down and we get ready to eat our food and we forget to call upon that name. Not only that, I wish I had time. I just really wish I had time because I heard him say, you can use my name. I, I heard him say, I, I got this name. It carries more weight than any other name. And, 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 and uh, you can use my name, whatever you desire. He said, ask it in my name. Doors open up when you use my name. Demons tremble when you use my name. Stuff starts happening when you use my name. Yokes are destroyed when you use my name. All right, so the Bible establishes the fact that the glory and the honor, there's majesty, and that there's weight. Let me hear you say weight. 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 Where's weight? His heavy. There's weight, the weight of his name. God is saying, while you are lifting my name, don't lift it empty. While you are lifting my name, don't lift it insincere. While you are lifting my name, don't lift it in a manner that your heart doesn't feel it. While you are lifting my name, don't lift such a heavy name lightly. It's too, it's too heavy to play with. Huh? It has too much meaning. It, it, it does too much. It, it means too much for us to lift it lightly. Holy is the Lamb. Don't praise me or don't sing to me in a way that my name doesn't register in your soul. God says, when you use my name, I want you to feel it. When you use my name, I want you to mean it. When you use my name, I want you to know that you're using the name, the most powerful name there is, and I don't want you to take it lightly, and I don't want you to play with it, and I don't want you to just use it because other people are using it. I want you to know what you're using, it, and I want you to feel it. I want you to mean it every time you call my name. All right? Then... How do we use his name in vain? You should have known that part was coming, right? Because I don't want to do it, right? 
He said, don't do it. I don't want to do it. So help me, preacher. How do we use his name in vain? We use his name in vain when we have lazy worship. Ask the person next to your neighbor. Are you a lazy worshiper? Now, whenever we're in worship, watch this now, and we use the Lord's name without the meaning of that glorious name registering in our hearts and in our souls, we are guilty of taking his name in vain. Huh? All right, you, you don't believe me. Uh, let's go to the Bible. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. I ain't messing with you. Matthew chapter 15, verse 7. Let me do verse 7. Matthew chapter 15, verse 7. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but what? But their heart is far from me. Amen. Amen. When our lips say, Lord, Lord, but our hearts are far from God. When our lips are saying the name of Jesus, but in our hearts we're not giving that name the attention and the adoration that it deserves, we are guilty of using his name in vain. Be careful now, be careful now, be careful now about the way we approach God in worship. While we are singing about uh, his greatness, uh, Lord, I lift your name on high. Hallelujah, I love to do it. Uh, our God is awesome. Our God is awesome and he can move my, he, yes he can, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. He is awesome. Uh, how great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? All will see how great is our God. While we are singing Salem and lifting up his name, you can't be on your phone. You cannot be on your phone while at the same time you are lifting up the name, uh, 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 the holy name, the biggest name, the weightiest name that you know. You, we can't be on our phone. We can't be walking in waving at people. In the middle of praise and worship, now other people are lifting his name and we're just walking in. We can't be talking to other people during the time that we lifting up the name. Because that's saying that what we got to say is more important than what we are saying to him. We can't stroll in hugging people, shaking people's hands. What we're doing is, watch this now, I know you're not conscious of it. I know you don't mean to do it. I know we don't mean no harm. But what we're doing is we're pulling them out of worship. We're pulling them away from a name that's above every name, giving attention to our name. Huh? Wait now. And I know it. I know we get it. I know we say it. Well, I don't want people to think that I just walked in. Well, first of all, we shouldn't be walking in. We should already be in. That's the first thing. Then the next thing probably is while worship is going on, once it started, we we a place big enough, we should have a section for everybody to just wait till we get through with worship because people think that when they walk in, then they have to automatically stop and start speaking to people. No, people are speaking to God. People are lifting up God. People are focused on the highest name there is. Well, I don't want people to think they just walked in and I, and I ain't say nothing to them. I know I didn't say nothing to them because my mind was on the highest name there is. My attention, my focus, it was on him. I'll speak to you while we welcome in the visitors. Or I'll call you tonight. I ain't come here to focus on you. My focus is on the highest name there is. Are you with me here? Don't, don't, 
be guilty. Now, I'm giving you permission. I'm giving you license. When you walk in, get to your seat. Get your praise on. You ain't got to be talking to nobody because you don't want to be guilty of taking their mind off of who they are wish lifting up. At praise and worship time, when you come in, people are worshiping. At praise and worship time, people, their attention is on God. Don't you be the one to take their attention off God. Are you with me here? And those of us who have our attention on God shouldn't be paying attention to anything else but what our attention is on. The devil's greatest distraction and mechanism is to draw our mind off God so that we could just be saying stuff with our lips, but our hearts are not connected to what we say. When our minds are somewhere else, when our bodies are here with God, but our minds are on the other side of town, when our words are empty and routine, when we're just going through the motions, praise and worship time, Malcolm said clap, Walter said clap, when we're just going through the motions and we're not giving him what's due his name, we might be guilty of lifting his name in vain. Huh? Touch somebody and say this deep. Touch somebody and say this deep. Touch somebody and say, this is deep. <laughs> Salem, let's not let our worship be in vain. Let's not let our coming to church be in vain. Let's not be this. Let's act every Sunday just like God himself is in the room and we can see him and we can feel him and we can touch him and we're giving him the glory that's due his name. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. What else, is, what, else, what else could be taking the Lord's name in vain? Having a grumbling spirit. Having a grumbling or a complaining spirit can be taking the Lord's name in vain. 1 Corinthians, thank you. I appreciate that. I needed it. 1 Corinthians 10, 10. 1 Corinthians 10, 10. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. That in your Bible? Look this way, Salem. I'm done. I'm done. I know y'all ready. I'm done. I'm done. I know that this is the part that ain't fun. I know that. Murmuring or us always being upset. Us always being mad at something or somebody. Y'all even being mad at me right now because of what time it is. Let me go on. Us being always guilt mad at somebody about something is saying that the Lord who is the maker of heaven and earth, the Lord who is the giver of every good and perfect gift, the Lord who is the redeemer of our soul, our constant complaining and looking at life negatively says, God, you ain't been good to me. Huh? I mean, I mean, you know, you know this. There's some people who ain't never happy. There's some people who never have anything good to say. That if they say ten things, not, eleven of them going to be negative. Uh, when in fact, when in fact, if we're children of God, the opposite is the case. God wakes us up every morning. God puts a roof over our head. God puts shoes on our feet. God put clothes on our back. God keeps us in our right mind. The Lord has seen us through dangers, seen and unseen. The next breath that we breathe, it comes from God. As a matter of fact, when we look around and when we think things over, all of our good days outweigh our bad days. Complaining says, God, you are not good to me. And God says, wait a minute now, as good as I am to you, if you never have nothing good to say, if you are never happy, then you are taking my name in vain. That's why we have to resolve that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
I'm done. I'm done. Number four, I'm done. I'm done. Number four on my list. Let me hear you say ouch. Let me hear you say amen. All disobedience can be a form of taking the Lord's name in vain. All disobedience can be a form of taking the Lord's name in vain. Luke 6.46. Luke 6.46. His name. Luke 6.46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? God is saying the weight of my name the infinite of my intelligence should let you know I know enough to know what I'm talking about. And for us to disobey him, we're in effect taking his name in vain because we're saying we know better than you. Are you with me here? Therefore, whenever we go contrary, uh, to what he says, we're taking his name in vain because we ought to know that he loves us and he loves us enough to only want good for us. He said in his word, if we know how to give, anybody got children? Anybody got children? Well, if we know how to give our children good gifts, how much more does he know how to give us good gifts? But then when we say Lord and don't do the things that he says, we're taking his name in vain. I'm done, Salem. Let me just say this as I sit down. Uh, let's honor his name. Let, let's exalt his name. Let's lift his name. Let's remember how much weight and authority his name has. And, and when we say it, let's mean his name. Uh, every time we say it, we ought to get happier and happier. Every time we say it, we ought to have more and more joy. And every time we say it, we ought to say it from way down in here, way down in my belly. Jesus, 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 you're good. Jesus, you're wonderful. Jesus, you're kind. I don't care who just walked in. Jesus, you are the best thing that ever happened to me. Jesus, Lord, I lift your name. Glory to your name. Every time we say it, it ought to become a crescendo. It ought to just get very, very reverberate all through this building. Jesus, there's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. Nobody has been as good to me. Nobody has been as kind to me. Nobody knows me like you. Nobody loves me like you. You're incapable of not loving me. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, don't take his name in vain. Every time you say it, mean it from your spirit. Mean it from your spirit. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Everybody's standing. Maybe there's one here tonight and We've heard this name tonight, this Jesus fella. But you don't know who he is in the part of your heart. You don't have a personal relationship with him. You've heard about him, but you don't know him. And there's a difference between knowing of somebody and knowing somebody. And we want to extend an invitation tonight for you to get to know him. To have a personal, intimate relationship with him. To allow him the opportunity and the access to live within your heart. Because when that happens, something changes on the inside of you. You walk different, you talk different, you live different, you look at life different. And we want you to have that opportunity tonight. Here's my question to you. If you were to perish tonight, if you were to die, do you know where your soul would spend eternity? Eternity is a long time and you want to make sure that you've got the situation set up for your future. Because we know that there are only two options when we die. There's heaven and there's hell. And there's the smoking section and the non-smoking section. And we would that you would find yourself for eternity in the non-smoking section. And you can do that simply by accepting Jesus into your life tonight. Accepting him as Lord and Savior. Accepting the fact that he died on Calvary's cross for your sins, past, present, and future. That he was buried and on the third day morning he got up with all power in his hand. This blood that was shed, it was shed for you. If you believe that and confess that tonight, you've just accepted Jesus into your heart. And in a few minutes we'll give you the opportunity to let it be known. Secondly, you might be here and you've accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. But you don't have a church home. You don't have a place where you're planted, a congregation, a community that you're connected with. Well, the amazing thing is that you're in the greatest church in the whole wide world tonight, Salem Baptist Church of Chicago. 
It's a church full of people that want to love on you and do life with you. And we would be happy to welcome you into our family. So here's what's about to happen. I'm going to count to three. And at three, those who have a church home and those who know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you'll take your seat. But for those of you who want to accept Jesus or connect with Salem tonight, we would that you come down to this altar. One, two, three. Look to that neighbor next to you and ask him, neighbor, are you saved? Do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior? Ask him, do you have a church home? Not just a place where you go, but a place where you grow away. We want to make sure everybody's in order tonight. That your situation is set. Well, can we celebrate the house, the fact that the house is in order tonight? We bless God for everybody being connected to Christ and being plugged into the church. Can we celebrate Pastor Meeks tonight for that meat that he put on the bone? Thank you, sir. As the seasoned saints would say, good meat makes its own gravy. And he did the doggone thing tonight. Well, are you equipped and ready to give now? It's time to give back to God a portion of that which he has blessed us with. If you're in need of an offering envelope, we've got some amazing ushers that are in the aisle right now with big smiles on their faces. And they want to serve you, so just elevate your hand and they'll be happy to come by, connect with you, and give you what you need so that you can give tonight. You also have the opportunity of giving via the Salem app. If you've not downloaded it, you're missing out. Go ahead and download that free app tonight. Also, we've got the kiosk in the lobby area for those who want to give via that platform. For those of you who streamed in tonight, watched us on Facebook Live, thank you so much. We really appreciate you connecting with us week after week. As Pastor encouraged us at the beginning of our worship tonight, call us, email us, drop us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from, that the ministry is being a blessing to you. Maybe tonight, after hearing such a great word, you decided to accept Jesus into your heart. Congratulations. But guess what? We want to know about it. We want to walk with you along this journey. So please reach out to us and connect with us so that we can partner with you on this new journey that you're taking. Or maybe you've decided, hey, I love Salem. I'm not in Chicago, but I want that to be my church home. I want Pastor Meeks to be my pastor. Congratulations. You've connected with the greatest church in the whole wide world. And we would love for you to reach out to us. Our online pastor would love to connect with you. Get you plugged in and make sure that you're really a part.